Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So Gearbest sent over their CR10 3D printer and they also are offering you a coupon code listed here with which the CR10 only costs under $400. And for that very cheap price point, is it the best printer you can get? Well, I guess we're gonna find out today. Those who are actively following my channel already know there is an unboxing and assembly video already out that you can see if you get the printer, how to assemble it and like how easy it really is to just assemble a printer. Most of it is already done in the factory anyway, so you really don't have to do much at all. So let's start out with the features of this 3D printer. Now one of the most like special features of it is its huge build volume. You can see behind me this base there is pretty darn huge. This is just the size next to my head. It's actually 40 centimeters high and the X and Y direction can be up to 30 centimeters. This is a significantly larger build volume than in most other printers. Generally you find about 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters in most printers you can get. So if you are planning to make like huge stuff like that, like lampshades uh, or other like vases, then this printer is perfect. Of course, prints like that take a long time. This is really thin, only one layer all around and still it took like 16 hours. There also is a heated bed that heats up relatively quickly and gets up to high temperatures as well. I tested it um, how far it would go up and I stopped at around 90 degrees Celsius but it was still going up, of course not quite as fast anymore but printing ABS on that bed should be no problem at all and most other materials won't need any higher than this uh, bed can achieve. And the extruder itself also perfectly gets up to all the temperatures you could need. It's very quickly in heating up and I haven't had any problems with it. To print you just slice your file and then for the easiest experience put it on an SD card and slide that one in the printer. Now the slot that the printer has is a micro SD card slot but I just picked up a little adapter and extension to a full size SD card which is a bit more durable than the tiny micro SD card slot on the side. Alternatively you can also hook up the printer to a computer and print that way. But I wouldn't recommend that except if you're using like a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint to print over the cloud. And speaking of the cloud, the printer doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that some of the really high-end printers have, like cloud accessibility or anything. The electronics are pretty basic, just print from the SD card and you can do like some basic stuff on the controller, but nothing too fancy. But you don't really need those fancy features because walking up to the printer and putting the SD card in isn't that much more difficult than uploading it through some web client that sometimes works. So let's talk a bit about usability. Now of course if you compare it to like the Ultimaker series this is no fair comparison. This printer is $400, the Ultimaker series like the higher end ones are $2000. But still, for this price, this printer is very easy to use. I already talked about the assembly, it's very quick, you can get it done in like 20 minutes and then you only have to like level the bed and it basically works. Depending how lucky you get, you might have to tighten some screws but that's no big deal either as all the tools are included and it's not that hard to figure out. There are also many, many videos online about this printer as it is quite popular. So if you have any problem, just Google it. You will certainly find a video on YouTube or an article somewhere. But then after it's assembled, the first print went almost perfectly already. There was some problem where it skipped a couple of steps in the Y axis, but I never had that problem since. I think it just uh, get, got caught on something like a cable or something. I didn't have any issues like that uh, since then. And otherwise the print stuck to the build plate. It, it comes covered with uh, tape 
but I removed that tape and replaced it with glue stick as that's my preferred method. But no matter what you prefer, if you prefer tape or some lacquer spray or glue stick or whatever, you can do it all on this platform. The platform is made out of glass, so you can put that on or you can replace the glass platform with some fancy Boltec platform if you prefer that for printing. One area where I have to deduct some points is with the print profiles. Some manufacturers are doing a really good job of including all the print profiles for every material you could need, but I only found like one or two profiles on the SD card which weren't that sophisticated. So if you don't know what all the settings are in a 3D printer, then it's maybe a bit harder to get it running, but it is pretty compatible with a wide range of standard settings and if you want to know more about the different settings you can check out some of my videos that I've made. I'm gonna have them linked down below. Now I'm sure that if you search online there are plenty of profiles that you can download as well for popular slices like Cura. Now when you're using a slicer you probably can't use the newest version of Cura as you can set up a custom printer there. At least I didn't find how you would do it. So you will have to stick with like the 15 point something version instead of Cura 2.0. And then finally the category you've all been waiting for, print quality. And I was blown away by the quality this printer puts out. On my channel I've been using a printer that by now is like 5 years old. But I've constantly been doing improvements on it but it just doesn't compare at all. Back then I paid 600 bucks for the printer and the print quality is so much worse than on this one. The prints come out almost perfectly. The layers are nice and smooth together, detail is pronounced, you don't have any problem with curling up or anything, it just works. And that is even though here out in a garage it has been between like 35 and 45 degrees Celsius as I live in California now and there has been a heat wave and usually PLA doesn't like it when it's that hot while printing but still all these prints came out perfectly I had, didn't have any failed prints and it just works. Now in conclusion, should you buy this printer? If you've never owned a 3D printer and you want to get into it, this might be the printer for you. It's very cheap compared to other high-end printers. It doesn't require much knowledge at all. Sure, you have to know like how to put in some screws and tune some profiles maybe, but those are skills that you can learn by watching a couple of YouTube videos very easily. Just if your expectation is that you plug in the printer and it, you don't have to do anything, then maybe it's not a printer for you. But if you are willing to like tinker with it for like half an hour, then you're perfectly fine with this printer. And for a price of 400 bucks, I don't think there is any better printer out there. And the fact that the build volume is this huge is just an added bonus. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more videos about this printer, leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. You can also comment down below and go to my Instagram or Twitter pages to interact with me more. Of course, to buy this printer, there's going to be an affiliate link down below and I also have affiliate links to Amazon and eBay there. So if you buy something online, consider using these links. They really help me out a lot. So thanks for watching and until next time.